like, comment, share, and subscribe. Pause the video right now to check out my social media, my radio show, and that drummerguy.com. And most of all, enjoy the following presentation. Hey, buddy. Hey, how's it going? Uh, good, man. Just uh, relaxing at home here. Some rare time off. Uh, kicking it in my pajama pants like a boss. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Uh, well, yeah, I, well, uh, thank you very much for taking the time to be able to do this interview. Ah, oh, dude, no worries, man. Thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. Well, of course, I'm, I'm here to talk about everything that's going on in the world of Black Dahlia Murder right now. I mean, uh, you guys have had an amazingly busy year this year, so it's awesome to see that you are able to take some time to be able to promote the brand new album, Nightbringers. Uh, yeah, dude, I'm stoked, man. We got lots of interviews, you know, lots of press right now, which is a good thing. Uh, lots of eyes on us right now. The uh, the pre-order is doing um, obscenely well, uh, breaking some records over at Metal Blade. So uh, very exciting right now for us. Yeah, and it's great to see that, too. I mean, after such a cool run, uh, being able to do Summer Slaughter, uh, playing one of your best albums all the way through, and then uh, now being able to do uh, promotion for everything with Nightbringers. I mean, it's great to see uh, the whole legacy of the Black Dolly murders being represented in such a great way. Uh, yeah, man, it's been cool. It was definitely a good uh, thing, I think, to, uh, to play Nocturnal and kind of bring the fans full circle 10 years later. And uh, also, you know, we were playing uh, the song Nightbringers out on the tour, getting people set segued into this new phase so i think it's worked out perfectly man and there's a a lot of excitement for the band right now and you know this is just a an unprecedented amount of uh pre-orders and stuff and you know just i don't know it's great it's this is more than i could have asked for and and speaking of that so uh, you guys were able to debut nightbringers uh live before it was released as a single what was the reception to the song before it got released as a single uh, they seem to like it a lot. It's a very direct song. It's different than anything we've done, I think, too. So it, it really stands out instantaneously, I think. And uh, has kind of a evil circus riff in it, which I, uh, I think it comes across really nicely live. So there seemed to be a lot of excitement for it right out of the gate. And then uh, we were filming on the tour, obviously. Uh, we had Vince from Metal Blade ride with us for a few days. And, you know, that was a pretty painless way to make a video, you know, instead of having to act and do all this other stuff that's uh, super corny. Uh, you know, just a good old-fashioned live video. And I really like the way it came out. Uh, that nice red treatment, you know, ties it to the, uh, the album art very nicely. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, I definitely agree. I mean, I love that live setting that goes with it. And just like you said, having that more red filter to go along with the album cover. I mean, it was a, it was a great way to go about things. Yeah, I'm very, I was very happy with it. Um, um, Vince did a great job. Uh, he ex exceeded all of our expectations. And uh, it's definitely done what it needed to do, man. It's created a lot of excitement for the song. And uh, yeah, we're just sitting pretty right now, man. This is really, uh, it's exciting. So what is it like for you now having like this a uh, rare chance of just being able to sit at home and and relax uh, you know do some press but being able to just relax and gear up for the next tour uh it's necessary man you know uh i need some time to decompress after a tour uh regain my humanity let's say but uh when i'm home i'm pretty private i i don't go out i don't do much you know i just i get uh i use my enthusiasm for humans on the road you know what i mean and uh it's kind of like uh, hitting a wall at a thousand miles an hour for when i come home you know i'm just i'm back to reality back to the problems back to um you know your parents being annoying and all that kind of thing so <laughs> oh yeah i can totally understand that i mean that's the great thing about uh, the position that you're in is that you are able to be able to take off from time on the road when you do need it but you are still able to go out there and tour pretty much everywhere that you want to play <laughs> Uh, yeah, man, you know, every album has afforded us new opportunities, and we kind of branch out and go to new places, it, it seems like, it, with every every record, and um, yeah, man, we're lucky, the band is, uh, is is very much in demand, you know, so there's, uh, there's always somewhere to go, there's always something to do, and, um, you know, I always want to get in front of the fans, you know, no matter what. Yeah, and... You know, there's no better way to be able to do that this year than not only just being able to headline Summer Slaughter, but being able to go out on a full headlining tour for 
Nightbringers. Uh, uh, I have not had the chance to be able to check out the album yet. I just was able to check out uh, Nightbringer so far. Uh, it should be in the next week or two where I finally uh, get the promo from Metal Blade and be able to really digest what's going on. So with, with that in mind, what was the process for Nightbringers? What, what did you want to accomplish this time around? Um, you know, I think we, we wanted to make our most varied album yet and i think that's what we've been inching towards with the last few records is making sure the songs have super super strong individual identity um it can get tricky as a fast band to to different differentiate your stuff that much you know we tried to to work with different rhythmic ideas all different kinds of pacing um you know, um, increased dynamics, I think, with the last few records. Um, you know, just paying attention to the minutia, to the details, you know what I mean? Uh, well, we're at the heart. It's definitely the tried and true Black Dahlia formula, you know. But uh, we're always trying to straddle that line between uh, doing what's classic for the band, but also satisfying our own needs as players and, and uh, you know, that itch to, to get more technical and to, you know, play stuff that's more demanding and satisfying. So, um, you know, it's a, it's a definite line that we try to walk for sure yeah and i think it definitely helps uh having brandon ellis a part of the band now with that i mean being able to help with that diversity and stuff because guy can literally play everything uh yeah and you know he's definitely put his stamp on the album you know not just in his solos but uh he wrote a handful of songs for the record that are you know really killer um you know, he's brought in elements of his, of his style that just some stuff that we haven't done yet, you know, incorporating some more kind of rock riffing here and there. Um, definitely um, some speed metal, um, uh, some seriously neoclassical stuff. Um, so, yeah, I mean, he's a very diverse player. He's very a wise man for his age. You know, he just turned 25, but uh, he's kind of an old soul when it comes to, to, to music and and. Uh, so uh, he, he's been the secret weapon for this, you know. I think he's really um, created a lot of excitement in the band for the rest of us, and I think we've reacted accordingly, you know, with what we brought to the album. And uh, yeah, it's just been a really exciting era, and I feel like um, like he's going to get a lot of recognition from this. You know, I feel like this is going to be uh, his moment in the sun that he's been waiting for. You know? Yeah, and he. I mean, all of you guys absolutely deserve it. But with Brandon, I mean, I've been uh, following his career for years. I mean, when he was part of Arsenal on the first tour when he was just touring before he joined the band and uh, just been following him all, all throughout the years. I mean, I'm, I was so happy to hear that he was able to join up with you guys because I know there was a lot that he could add to the band and it makes me that much more excited to be able to see what's going on with Nightbringers because I know all the diversity that he is capable of and when he's able to influence the band in such a way when you guys wanted to have more of that diversity in the first place, I can just tell it's going to be awesome to hear. Yeah, man, he, you definitely, uh, you know, he definitely right. He definitely, um, you know his stamp is all over this thing man and I think it's a it's a better record for it you know he, I really love the uh, the spin that he's put on things and you know his soloing it just speaks for itself it's just so like emotionally gripping and uh you know, it, it, it takes the uh, listener on a real ride, you know, so I'm just so thankful to have him. Yeah, and I always think that makes for better guitar solos as well. I mean, it's one thing to be able to play any combinations of notes that you want to, but when you actually have the solos mean something, when the notes actually mean something, it just makes the entire song stand out more. Yeah, I agree. You know, I and mean, he uh, he's always looking to make the songs go from um, a two-dimensional to a three-dimensional, you know what I mean, in that way, to make stuff really pop to make stuff stand out um you know he's just he's just wise beyond his years he's a, a great writer he's a brilliant musician he's the, the most educated musician that i think has ever been through the band you know so he's just been like a an infinite source of um inspiration and knowledge and you know it's just uh it's very exciting to have him enter the fold so how much has that inspired you with this uh, new lineup for the band i mean how much has it inspired you when it comes to the lyrics um, I felt um, it was really exciting to have a you know a new writer come in to hear something that's a little bit different, but still Black Dahlia. But uh, you know, it's just it felt so fresh that uh, you know um, it, it was easy to respond with excitement and enthusiasm. You know, uh, I wanted to honor what he did. I wanted to to make it to write lyrics that uh, that made people's blood pump as much as the music did for me. You know, so 
Uh, the third song, Matriarch, for example, is uh, very much like a neoclassical kind of Baroque thing going on. Uh, very much powdered wiggery is going on in there. Um, and it's just, it was a really cutthroat song, and I felt like I had to honor that kind of viciousness with the equally vicious lyric, you know. And the lyric is about um, a woman who's trying to have a kid, and she's not having any luck, so she goes crazy, and she ends up stalking this other young mother who's due for a baby and uh, runs her off the side of the road at night uh, when no one else is around and uh, and assaults her and cuts the uh, baby out of her stomach for her own uh, her own gain and leaves the mother to die and it's you know steeped in some uh, reality sickly and sadly you know there's uh, there's been instances like that and some stories like that uh, in the last while I believe one of them happened in Denver and uh, so yeah you know it's not all just fantasy that influences uh, what I do you know sometimes the uh, sometimes the real world is more death metal than anything you can make up you know yeah that's that's the great thing and the sad thing about uh, being in this position I can uh, imagine for yourself is that there is no shortage of inspiration when you can't think of something on your own yeah the world seems to be in increasingly uh, on a downward slope you know uh, society uh, I don't know like you said it, there's just there's no shortage of, uh, of bad news out there that's for sure yeah, I mean, just like when you were describing uh, the song, it's like I could already imagine like the music video in my head that if, if you go about that direction, just like being able to tell the story of that. And I can just imagine how gruesome that'd be able to come off. Uh, yeah, I've kind of imagined like a, uh, a comic strip look to it, you know, uh, if we do do something for it. But uh, yeah, I think that'd be really cool. I, I'd really like to, uh, to get something visual going for that one, you know, but uh, uh, it's definitely uh, an intense lyric and to match an intense song and yeah it just came from the uh i don't know there's just a lot of excitement and having new blood in the band and having him um want to do so much with his part with his role you know what i mean and just really step into to being a big part of this band almost immediately and and uh you know it just says a lot it said a lot to us and with that said, I mean, being able to have uh, this uh, new lineup, this uh, new fresh blood to the band, uh, did you have any uh, lyrics in mind when you were thinking about the new album, or did you wait until riffs started coming in where you started to get lyrical inspiration? I, I pretty much always wait until I'm hearing the music, you know. I, I definitely write everything as a reaction to what I'm hearing, and I try to sit with each song and really identify some kind of a feeling that it, you know, identify what it's emoting or what it's saying to me, you know, and I try to, to make a storyline that not only matches it in that kind of theme, but I try to make it really closely match the ups and downs of the song. You know, like I, I wanted to, the climax lyrically to happen with the climax musically and just create like a whole total package, hopefully for someone that that's going to take their involvement to that level and read the lyrics and along with it and stuff, you know? Oh yeah, and that's what I've always admired about your songwriting. I mean, whether it was uh, I'm Charming, which was the first experience I had with Black Dahlia hearing that song, or all the way through, you know, Raped and Hatred by Vines of Thorn, or I Will Return, or Nightbringers. I mean, it's just like you're always able to tell like this really cryptic story that's going on song for song, and it really makes you want to listen to the lyrics and just imagine what's going on in the song. Uh, that's the idea, man. I, you know, I was hoping to do something that affects people. You know, um, I take it very seriously. Uh, I love to write for the band. I, I, I uh, love the challenge of it. I love the format of the three-minute story, you know, uh, short and sweet. But, uh, you know, I try to inject it with a, uh, a certain psychology, I guess, you know, uh, where you, it's not just a dark lyric, but, you know, there's, there's more to it, you know. Uh, a look inside the mind of whatever evil character I'm trying to, to portray, you know. Yeah, and I think that's very important. I mean, it's one thing to be able to just have, like, a stereotypical death metal lyrics or something like that just meant for shock value, but when you actually have a story behind it, when the lyrics actually mean something, just like I was talking about with guitar solos, when you have lyrics that actually mean something and they go together in a story, it just makes the song that much more impactful. Yeah, man, if you, if you can have it all, man. If you can have a killer solo, a good song lyrics artwork you know it's like we, we try to think about all these factors and how they they play into the grand scheme you know oh absolutely and um you know uh 
a month from tomorrow, you guys are going to be hitting the road with some incredible bands doing another uh, North American run. Have you guys decided what songs you're going to be showcasing off the new album for the upcoming tour yet? Um, no, there really hasn't been much talk about it, but I, I'm assuming it's going to be the three that we are previewing before the album comes out. Um, there'll be a second song released uh, around the 19th or 20th of this month, and then a final song will come out just before the album. So I imagine we'll be playing at least those three. But um, yeah, there, there hasn't been that much discussion on, on the topic yet. You know, and uh, that's just how we are. We're just weird, lazy stoners. We figure everything out at the last second, and uh, somehow it just works out. <laughs> <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with that either. I mean, with all the guy, all the times I've been able to uh, see you guys, whether it was just this past summer slaughter, or when you guys were uh, touring with Carcass, or uh, touring with Nile. I mean, it always seems like you guys have put together such a great set list that really fits the mood for every tour that you're a part of. Uh, yeah, we try to keep that in mind. You know, we have so many songs you know which is tricky to represent all eras of the band properly but we try to pay attention to um what songs they respond to the most and have those but also you know we've realized over time that they want to hear some deep cuts too you know what i mean so doing a uh, the unhallowed anniversary and now uh, nocturnal has uh you know sharp we sharpened up on a lot of songs that we hadn't thought about or played in a long time so we can swap those in and out too which is uh good you know what i mean it just seemed like with every member we got we would lose a few more songs you know what i mean we just had to to get it together in time to to go do a tour and you know that's usually how it starts out with a new guy but uh yeah, those, you know, doing these two anniversaries has definitely uh, forced us to retread a lot of old ground, and it's been cool, though. Uh, I really have enjoyed uh, playing some of these songs that uh, that fell off of our radar, you know? And with that, uh, it kind of mentioned there, but uh, do, do you have a new appreciation for the back catalog that you haven't uh, been playing live lately? Or uh, is it good to just be able to, like, show that off or and then focus on new material for you? I mean, it was, it was definitely cool to... To hear Nocturnal played at its full potential, you know, uh, I think we were still young when we were out uh, playing that when we first came out. I think now that we have, you know, 10 more years of experience under our belts and, uh, you know, I, it was just really, it was really fulfilling to hear it fleshed out in such an awesome way and uh, you know, hear Brandon's uh, take on the solos there, um, you know, bringing new life to that department was definitely exciting, you know, but, um, but we don't want to really be be known as a nostalgic act and you know this is where we got to kind of draw the line and stop doing this kind of thing because you know we have so when you put out a record every two years i mean you can't do anniversaries for each album you know what i mean it's like that's going to take up too much of our time it's going to get in the way of our real priority which is you know new music and and uh you know nightbringers and beyond so the real focus is is getting back to getting back to normal celebrating nightbringers but also you know celebrating all of our back catalog uh you know trying to mix it up a bit but you know we don't want to be trapped in that kind of nostalgia act thing at this point it's so i still consider it so early in our career to be resting on those kind of laurels you know what i mean i don't want to do like a scorpions thing at this point you know <laughs> yeah and you know that's that's what i love so much about you guys is you know there's a lot of people who say that uh you know the the band's newest album is their best music to date and so on and so forth but with you guys it's really true i mean uh, over the years every time that there's a new album out i hear something new from you guys and it just makes me appreciate the band more and more there's always something new that i can really and especially with uh, all the talk of diversity going on i mean it's gonna be one of those albums that i'm gonna want to listen to from start to finish and just be able to appreciate every song yeah man i think that i think you'll like it dude you know if that's how you feel about the other records that i think this one is uh is even harder in that direction you know it's even more various even more um of its own thing its own animal you know so i yeah i think you, you that you'll like it and and uh I feel very proud at this moment. You know, I feel like it's a really huge, a huge step for us. You know, and to 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 have um, something new to be excited about, some new, you know, at this point, ten, you know, almost on our tenth record. You know, that's 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 awesome. It's awesome to be here. It's awesome to have ex new excitement for for new music and to still be relevant. You know, it's it's amazing. Oh, very much so. And speaking of that, uh, uh, keeping up the tabs with you, I, I know that you love being able to uh, show off music that you enjoy. So while people are waiting for Nightbringers, what would you 
you recommend to people that's uh, come out lately or some undiscovered gems that you've discovered? Um, the new Venom album is uh, really awesome. V-E-N-E-N-U-M. They're uh, from Germany. Uh, their sound is sort of like um, necrophobic, but it has like a really artful slant to it too, kind of like Tribulation. You know, like a lot of drama is ramped up on that album. The album is called The Trance of Death, and uh, it's one of the most original striking uh, death metal albums I've heard this year. Very, very cool album. Um, also, the new Temple of Void. Uh, they're from here in Detroit. They play uh, uh, Doom Death, like a, a slow, crawling, old-school death metal. And uh, their new album, Lords of Death, is, is super good. And I think it's going to make a lot of waves in the underground this year. So, yeah, man, I always have my ear to the ground. I'm always checking stuff out. Um, you know, I'm doing the obituaries column over at Metal Injection where I um, showcase a bunch of bands each month. So it's, you know, that that whole thing just came out of necessity for me. I, I was already doing the homework and, and uh, you know, I'm, I'm like neurotic when it comes to, to, to death metal and new music. You know, I'm just always on the hunt, always, you know, combing the web and checking out every label and checking out, you know, internet national the international scenes and it's just something that that brings me joy and kind of keeps me grounded you know so it's been really fun to do the column and kind of shed light on a lot of uh, smaller bands you know i just saw so many bands i i like not getting any press and not you know and especially toward the brutal end of the spectrum you know brutal death metal is in the upswing it's in the biggest it's the biggest it's been i think and uh a lot of uh, publications just kind of turn a blind eye to it in metal, so I wanted to to um, draw some attention to what I feel is a you know a great style, and uh, that there's a lot of bands just uh, flying under the radar there, you know. And that is 100% why I do what I've done for the last six years. Whether it's a band with a notoriety like Black Dahlia Murder, or uh, some underground bands that have just started within the last year, or uh, bands that have been going strong for however long. I mean, I just love being able to show off the bands I truly care about it's from all spectrums of rock and metal and i'm very fortunate to be able to have a fan base that actually does appreciate what i do and i can imagine that's the same for you like it's a great feeling to be able to show off all these bands that you care about that you've discovered that you want to be able to show off and make some new fans for those bands uh yeah man it does my heart a lot of good honestly um I, I love the underground. I love death metal so much. It's my inspiration. It's my, it's everything to me. So just to give a little bit back and get some, some, some light shed on these bands and, uh, is it's awesome, you know, and, uh, to have a reputation for doing that, you know, feels good. It, it's, it's, a uh, it's an honor, you know? So when you first started off being able to, uh, do this with, uh, being able to discover these bands and be able to write out and, uh, grow these fan bases for them, what have you learned in that time from, uh, the feedback of doing this? I, I learned that, um, that it's really, it's really working. I mean, like, uh, uh, metal ejection is obviously a very pro high profile metal site, you know? So that was, that was really good to link up with those guys. And, you know, I considered them my friends for a long time before this. So it was kind of a natural fit. And, um, but just like when it comes down to sheer numbers and stuff, they tell me, uh, you know, like in a week, there'll be uh, 10,000 hits on, on the column. And uh, the size of some of these bands, you know, for, for 10,000 different people to click the link and hear them, that's no small feat, man. That's, that's, those are big gra numbers in the underground. That's a lot of, a lot of attention, you know? So, so it's, it's awesome. It, it, it's amazing that, uh, that it's working and that I can, you know, influence things like in that, in that, in that regard, you know, it's very cool. Yeah. And it's, it's such a great thing to be able to see that too, because I know there's a lot of people in metal who just like to stick to their own sound, just worry about their own band and not care about uh, other bands that they tour with or other bands uh, trying to innovate sound. It makes me so appreciative of someone like you who wants to go out and discover these underground bands and give them the recognition they deserve because there is so much talent in death metal and just like you said in brutal death metal where it's not getting the publication it really deserves but when you are able to do that once a month and be able to showcase some of the bands that you're currently checking out i mean it's really great that you are able to do that it's awesome yeah i love uh the trust that people give me that you know uh i love um the respect i love meeting bands that i'm a, a big fan of and this has helped me a lot you know uh in doing that uh get some free swag along the way which i can't complain about either you know so uh 
it's just been it's been really fun it's like i said it's done my heart a lot of good and um it's something you know i've been slacking on my column a little bit and i'm a, a little bit late here but uh i have intentions to return in a big way coming up soon and uh it's just been a uh, kind of victim to all the busyness in my life right now with uh, this new record and stuff but uh you know I'm, I'm thinking about this this next chapter of of, of the obituaries and uh I'm looking forward to uh, getting unfurling it upon everybody. Yeah, and I'm definitely looking forward to checking it out, too. I mean, I love checking it out every time that uh, you release a new article of it. And uh, with with the love and passion that I know that you have with the bands, I mean, I can't wait to hopefully discover some new bands that I, I wasn't even aware of yet and be able to help support those bands as well. That's cool. Yeah, that's cool, man. I try to, you know, I, I'll comb at any level, you know, demos, promos, um, you know, the, the very, very uh, outskirts of... Um, of uh, a lot of different third world scenes and stuff, you know, like I'm not afraid to look anywhere, you know, and I don't care how broken the English is, you know what I mean? Like you just got to kind of let your guard down to, to those things because there's, there's so much great music that is made by the underdog out there, you know? Oh, very much so. So again, uh, uh, getting back into uh, the upcoming North American tour that you're going to be doing, uh, you know, with such amazing bands like Suffocation, Decrepit Birth, uh, Necrot, you know, it's like, it's really cool to be able to see that you are able to bring some like amazing bands, you know, ones with an amazing legacy like Suffocation to uh, Decrepit Birth and all this. But uh, what's going to be going on for the end of 2017 into 2018? Um, that'll be our last tour of the year. So we'll be back at home for the uh, the winter season, uh, just chilling for, for the holidays. But uh, we'll be back out in Europe uh, in February. Uh, I can't really divulge any details yet, but it's going to be a massive tour where we are, are not the biggest band on the bill, which is, uh, you know, what we're constantly praying for you know to kind of to get out there and support someone that's bigger and um get some new fans you know what i mean uh so uh but yeah i'm definitely looking forward to that but uh there's also talk of another u.s tour um for spring so you know we're in the, the early stages of formulating that but uh yeah the next two years we'll you know we'll just be packed with touring uh in traditional bdm fashion man just uh filling our schedule just shaking every opportunity we can to uh satisfy some want from somebody to see the band hopefully you know oh very much so and i'm looking forward to the next time that you guys come back to uh minnesota because i with everything that you've talked about with uh, nightbringer so far i mean having heard uh, the new song live in person i can't wait to see the other songs that you're going to be playing live off the album and just get that full experience of the entire career of the black dolly murder you know from the beginnings to now just seeing that progression in a live set yeah, I, I enjoy that. I enjoy representing all eras of the band. And, um, you know, I enjoy the nostalgia of playing old songs. You know, I enjoy, um, you know, like I said before about Nocturnal, hearing the old songs with the new blood and energy. And, you know, the guys are just incredible players, man. I'm so blessed to to be with them, you know. Uh, I, I feel... Um, I feel like I've, I've fooled them somehow, you know, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, you know, it's, it's a great thing to see. And if you are uh, fooling them, I mean, you're fooling the fan base too, because like I'm uh, fully diehard into what you're doing with the band and with the lineup that you currently have right now, which is just amazing live. And what I imagine is going to be coming from Nightbringers October 6th through Metal Blade. I mean, I can already imagine it's going to be one of my favorite albums of the year if Nightbringers is anything to go off of and everything that you've described from it. It. And I can't thank you enough for being able to take all this time to be able to talk to me about everything that's going on in the world of the Black Dolly murder and uh, your writing as well. I mean, I'm a huge fan of what you do when it comes to that as well and being able to show off all these great underground bands. And I really appreciate you taking the time to be able to do this. Oh, uh, no, thanks for having me, man. This has been a really, uh, really good one, dude. I really appreciate you and uh, the kind words. And I guarantee you'll like the new record, man. Oh, awesome. Well, again, uh, uh, thank you for taking the time to be able to do this. Uh, this was uh, one of my bucket list interviews once I started. I wanted to be able to help promote the Black Dolly murder, so I'm so happy I was able to do that. Uh, before we wrap things up, is there anything else you'd like to mention that I hadn't brought up yet? Um, no, pretty much. I think we covered all the bases, man. Um, just, uh, yeah, dude, if you, if you can find it in your, in your Grinch heart, um, reach out and uh, pre-order the new album. That would mean the world to us, you know. We're... we're uh, Things are looking great, but uh, 
but every uh, every sale counts, especially these days. It's hard hard times to sell physical copies. So, um, you know, we're trying to make a statement here. Uh, you know, it's trying to show. I want I want people to realize how big this band actually is. You know, like I see I I can see it, but I want it to to resonate on this kind of a, um, under this kind of a microscope. You know what I mean?